Thank you for having me in this meeting. My brief talk will be about the contribution of technology to the livelihood of small-scale fishers, as well as its role on food security. <clears throat> small-scale fishers in general has been known to be uh, or has been broadly described to be a fishery that is stricken by poverty, being excluded or being sidelined and with lack of um, infrastructure development. And similarly, when coming, when losing the lens of technology, it's known to be uh, widely portrayed to be lacking advances and adoption of technology. But that is changing as so there is a gradual increase in the adoption of technology. And one of the indicators has been the improvements in production and general efficiency throughout the value chain, which is translated into profit generation for fishers, as well as the reduction and possible elimination of the dependence to costly middlemen. Uh, which comes with the uh, cost, financial cost. And technology also facilitates the implementation of the FAO guidelines on sustainable small-scale fishery, particularly with regards to data collection, traceability and transparency throughout the value chain, and most importantly, facilitating market access and now with the climate change effects on the rise, uh, there's now increased um, awareness in some aspects that relates to disaster mitigations and climate change adaptation. And one other part that is increasingly becoming central is the access, how technology facilitates access to financial and general support services. So this study was conducted focusing on the fisheries management aspects, trade market access, as well as how it affects socioeconomics uh, in, com in fishing communities. We use the political economy lens to understand these um, interactions uh, after um, engaging more than 20 uh, stakeholders in in-depth interviews as well as focus group meetings. Our results show that technologies are increasingly improving lives of small-scale fishers, although there are challenges. For example, the translation or the move away from wooden boats and traditional boats into fiberglass uh, boats, as well as the replacement of rowboats by outboard engines. And the improved health and safety aspects when coming to fish handling and processing, and uh, the use of uh, portable uh, navigation, and communication uh, technologies that small-scale fishers are now using and the creation of platforms where fish markets have now been digitized. So the use of um, applications, mobile applications such as uh, this fish and in South Africa, Abalobi is the one that is more popular and all these require investments and in some instances there's been a drawback or a slow uh, progress in that regard for adoption of technology because of the costs associated to that and the requirements of uh, investment as well as in where the technology has been adopted there are indications that this fails to address the class and gender-based marginalization of groups of community members, particularly women. Small-scale fisheries is generally known to be a sector dominated by males 
and within that in, it had inherited the class differentiations which came from the small scale i mean from the commercial fishing rights allocation process that um, created different classes in communities so now small scale fishers are experiencing to some extent the worsening of those situations because of technology in that women have been involved in post service uh, practices or functions of the small scale uh, value chain and supply chain and now they are being replaced by technology not only women are affected by that but largely women the middlemen well, some of them were men and they are also equally affected in a form of loss of jobs because the chain has now been shortened and on the other side you find that um, because fish that was traditionally reserved or not really reserved but used for small scale fishers to be a fish for poor people is now being used for high-end market so because of that the high-end markets are now paying uh, high prices for the fish and coupled with the improved handling and processing of the fish they are now generating more income from the fish that was generally used by consumed by the poor which in a sense it reduces fishing pressure while increasing their revenue and given that uh, access to these markets with this platform has created a power relation of power of access uh, by some those who needed to access some of these markets had indicated that they're no longer able to access some of the restaurants because they have been somewhat monopolized by the those who own the, the platforms so now they are expected or required to go through them so that it goes now to the negotiations through a middleman so basically a replacement of the physical middleman by a digital middleman and given the prices related to this uh, given that fish is now becoming more expensive because of the improved efficiencies in the value chain it means that it's no longer suitable or affordable or available or accessible to the community traditional communities now only becoming more available to the affluent market which uh, is a negative contribution to food security because these are all the pillars these are the pillars the main pillars of food security and then I'm not saying that there should be no improvement in terms of technology adoption there should be but at the same time there needs to be efforts to mitigate against uh, unintended consequences in conclusion we're seeing that uh, technology is replacing the cash economy because fishers are no longer getting paid cash and instead money is getting wired directly into their bank accounts and this has also simplified data collection because the landings and the environmental variables are recorded and transmitted in real time without the need now of paperwork. And this has enhanced the sharing of information where fishers are participants rather than being subjects. And the issue now is the balance between the local supply of fish or the high end market in relation to food security. For livelihood, it's good they're making good income, but it's also creating inaccessibility of nutritious food in local communities. And that as such, technology uh, does not need to disrupt social, environmental, and cultural practices. For example, the fishing practice in communities has been there, but with technology that's facilitated the move of fish out of the communities and there needs to be policy instruments that promote uh, technology while at the same time uh, mitigating against uh, the unintended consequences and lastly uh, technology needs to be one of the uh, instruments in the toolkit to enable the development of small-scale features thank you